Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to teach you Chapter 7, Lesson 7, which is about factoring special products. Please have your journals open to page 236. If you remember back in Section 3 of this same chapter when I taught you about special products of polynomials, there were a couple of um, tricks that you could use. So for example, a plus b multiplied by a minus b was there's a shortcut that you could use this uh, a squared minus b squared and also these down here so a plus b all quantity squared uh, there was a shortcut that you could use for that so this is the same concept it's just in reverse so it's the shortcut going backwards so let's take a look at this example in the middle of the page i'm going to solve it the way that we've done before that i've taught you before so we need to think of some multiples that multiply together to get us x squared. So that would be x and x. And we need to think of what multiplies to negative 9. So that would be negative 3 and positive 3. So if we multiply across like this, we get x times 3, which is 3x. Multiply this way, you get negative 3x. And as you can see, if we added these two terms together, we would get a 0, which in that there is no middle term here and so that does indeed work out so that means that my answer would be x minus 3 and x plus 3. Now like I have told you before you can go ahead and follow this same uh, method that we've used in the past in order to get your answer but if you would like to know the shortcuts if you have a perfect square here and a perfect square here then it ends up being this special rule. One thing I wanted to point out is that if you had x squared plus 9, that would not work out, and I'll show you why. So if I had uh, this uh, becomes x times x, and then the other one here, what multiplies to 9, would be 3 times 3. And if we cross multiplied this, we would get 3x and this would be 3x, and that does not add up to 0. And in fact, if you have a positive in the middle here, it ends up being not factorable at all. So this particular uh, situation would not be factorable. For the examples just underneath that, they have to do with the perfect square trinomial pattern. Let's go ahead and practice this using the other method. So we need to think of some multiples of x squared. So that would be x multiplied by x. And we need to think of some multiples of 9, positive 9. So I'm going to do 3 and 3. Now if we multiply across here, x times 3 is 3x. And multiply across here, we also get 3x. And notice that these two do indeed add up to the middle term, which is 6x. And so what you end up getting is x plus 3 times x plus 3. And an easier way to write that is x plus 3 squared. And once again, if you know the rule, uh, you can go straight from here to the actual answer if you can see this, uh, if you can see the pattern that's going on here. But once again, if you don't want to try and memorize that pattern, you can go ahead and go back to doing it the way that we've been practicing. And the same holds true if there's a minus sign here. So if we do it the same way that we've done before, this would be x times x. And once again, we have 3 times 3, but this time the middle term is negative. So that means it would need to be negative 3 times negative 3. And once we cross that, we get negative 3x and negative 3x. And once again, these two middle terms do indeed add up to this middle term here. And so my final answer would be x minus 3 times x minus 3. And that does simplify to x minus 3 all quantity squared. So for both of these rules, if you want to try learning the rule and using them, that is fine, but if you would rather go ahead and do it the other way, that is fine too. It's whatever is most comfortable for you um, and whatever you feel happier doing. For the examples on page 237, we're not going to do 7 through 12. 
For problems one through six, we're going to try using this pattern here, if you would like to give that a try. So what I notice is that we have s multiplied by s, and then 49 is negative 7 multiplied by positive 7. That means that I do, these would add up to 0, which is what I want because there's nothing in between. So that means that my answer is going to be s minus 7, s plus 7. And once again, if you remember, uh, you can flip-flop these two factors around. So you could have the plus number here and the minus number here. That would be fine. Let's take a look at number 4. So on number 4, we have 4g squared. And so that would be 2g multiplied by 2g. And then 25 is negative 5 and positive 5. And that would add up to 0 if we cross multiplied and all that. So we have our answer, which is 2g minus 5 and 2g plus 5. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 6. So 81 is 9 times 9. And then 49k squared, so that would be negative 7k and positive 7k. So then I have my answer is going to be 9 minus 7k and 9 plus 7k. All right, I would like for you to go ahead and try 2, 3, and 5 on your own. All right, here are my answers. Please pause the video and check and see how you did. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. For these next six problems, we're going to be using this pattern here. So we have, if we have a perfect square in the front and also a perfect square in the back, and then the middle term is 2 times the square root of this and the square root of that, I put a plus or minus here and then a plus or minus here. So if it's plus, then this answer will be plus. If this is minus, this answer will be minus. So this is the overall pattern, if you can recognize it. Let's go ahead and see if we can. And once again, if you're not comfortable doing it that way, then go ahead and go back to doing it the other way that we've been practicing all along. So let's take a look at number 13. What I notice is that I have, I do have a perfect square here, and I do have a perfect square here. So x is going to be x multiplied by x, and 64 is 8 times 8. Now, if I look at this, um, they're both positive, and they're both going to add up to the middle term, which is 16. So that means I do have this pattern. Since they're both exactly the same going across, it's x plus 8, x plus 8. I can simplify that by just saying x plus 8, all quantity squared, and that is my answer there. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 17. So on number 17, I do have a perfect square. 30, the square root of 36 is 6, so 6c and 6c. I also have a perfect square here that is going to be 7 multiplied by 7. Now if I cross product here, so 6 times 7, that's 42, and this is going to be also 42, and 42 plus 42 does equal 84. So that means that I do have that same pattern that I'm looking for. And, and looking across here, it would be 6c plus 7 multiplied by 6c plus 7. Since they're both the same, we can just write 6c plus 7, all quantity squared. And that would be my answer. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 18. So we do have a perfect square here. We have 100 which is 10. So that 10x multiplied by 10x. And 1 is also a perfect square because it's 1 multiplied by 1. If we were to cross here, we would get 10x. And then this would also give me 10x. Ah, oh, but I need it to equal negative 20 in the middle, don't I? So that means that the two ones need to be negative which means that these two tens turn to negative, and now it does work. Since they're both exactly the same going across, I can simplify my answer as 10x minus 1, all quantity squared. I would like for you to try 14, 15, and 16 on your own. Please check your answers and see how you did. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. For numbers 19 through 24, they want us to solve the equation. 
Now, the reason why we're practicing this again, remember, is if we solve the equation, we're trying to find out where the zeros are. So that will help us later on when we need to graph quadratic equations. The first step is to make sure that we have everything on one side of the equation all equal to zero. So I'm going to start with number 20. I need, to I need to subtract 49 on both sides so that I can get it all on one side of the equation. So now I have 9y squared minus 49 is equal to 0. So I see a pattern here because I notice that 9y squared is a perfect square and also 49 is a perfect square. So 3y times 3y equals 9y squared and 7 multiplied by negative 7 equals 49. And if we multiply across, we get negative 21. This will be positive 21, and that equals to 0. So that means that my partial answer, I'm not there yet, but we have 3y plus 7, and we have 3y minus 7 is equal to 0. So now if you remember the zero product property, this has to equal 0. So that would be 3y plus 7 is equal to 0. And also, this has to equal to 0, which is 3y minus 7 is equal to 0. Now when I solve for y on both of those, I get either positive 7 thirds or negative 7 thirds. So that means that my final answer is y is equal to plus or minus 7 over 3. And that's my answer. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 23. So on number 23, I see that I don't have everything on one side. So my first step is to add 1 ninth on both sides. And we're going to get n squared plus 2 thirds n, and then plus 1 ninth is equal to 0. Now I notice that n squared is n multiplied by n. And 1 ninth is actually a perfect square because it is 1 third multiplied by 1 third. So if we multiply across, we get 1 third n and 1 third n, and that does equal 2 thirds n. Since they're both exactly the same uh, going across, then we can simplify this by saying n plus 1 third squared is equal to 0. So remember, that means we're going to have a repeated 0. So we only have to, have to solve this once. So n plus 1 third is equal to 0. And when we solve for n, we get n is equal to negative 1 third. Let's take a look at number 24. So I need to add k squared to both sides. And so that leaves me with k squared minus 6 over 5k plus 9 over 25 is equal to 0. So this is actually has this actually does have perfect squares here and here. So k squared is k times k and 9 over 25 is 3 fifths multiplied by 3 fifths. And if we multiply that across, this will be positive 3 fifths k, positive 3 fifths k. Oh, but wait a second, it needs to equal a negative. So that means that these 3 fifths should change to negative. So now we have negative 3 fifths k, negative 3 fifths k, which does indeed equal negative 6 fifths k that gets in the middle. So we have k minus 3 fifths. And since they're both the same, we only need to write it once. Square it equals 0. Once again, we only have a repeated, we only have one 0 because it's repeated. And so this would be k minus 3 fifths is equal to 0. So our final answer is k is equal to positive 3 over 5. I would like for you to try a few on your own. Please do 19, 21, and 22. All right, check your answers and see how you did. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. For the sake of this video, we're going to skip number 25, but we might be doing that during class time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.